It's going to be a great Winter Olympics, one athlete was reported to have said upon arriving in Heathrow this morning. But the great British summer weather may be the least of the problems. Despite another appearance in the Commons by the Home Secretary, we still don't know how many security staff the private contractor G4S will be able to provide. And today there were more stories that sounded like plot lines from the supposedly fictional sitcom 2012. Buses containing athletes getting lost and police being called in to cover for security guards who just didn't show up. Joe Lynham reports. There may be trouble ahead. The writers of 2012, the parody of the Olympics, couldn't have written the script for this very real security nightmare any better. Last week's episode even saw them discussing catastrophization and the increased demand for security. I know you're going to take us through the catastrophization feedback later, I think. Most certainly, Ian. Really tremendous... Ironically, Lord Coe, who is Mr Olympics, plays himself in the BBC comedy. His words on this actual shambles were not unlike quotes from the show. It's only when the rubber hits the road uh, that we were able to see, as G4S identified, a, a gap. But London's mayor, who many feel is beyond parody, was dismissing some of the negativity surrounding the build-up to the Games. When people in this city see the torch relay, any remaining vestiges of Olympo's scepticism, we don't want the souffle to collapse when everybody goes home in September. The army moved in to fill the shortfall left by G4S, which the defence minister, Andrew Robothan, described as a debacle. Nobody will remain longer on operations in Afghanistan because of this uh, debacle over the G4S contract. The Home Secretary, though, wasn't backpedalling in the Whitehall velodrome. G4S had been advising her up to last week that they'd have more than enough staff. In fact, G4S repeatedly assured us that they would overshoot their targets. That shift in blame towards G4S seemed to clash with comments from the Culture Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, whose department runs the Olympics. He was playing down the matter only yesterday. I don't think this is the moment for getting into the blame game. Actually, G4S have been quite honourable. They put their hands up. I think it's completely normal that you're going to find some contractors on a project of this size who aren't able to deliver what they promised. But today the opposition weren't buying it. They scented another Olympo shambles in the making. How on earth could the minister responsible for delivering Olympic security be the only person who didn't know? On top of the army being drafted in, today it was revealed that the police had to step in at Olympic locations all over Britain, where G4S security staff had failed to turn up. So, for example, in Northumbria, out of an expected 58 G4S staff, only 10 donned their high-vis jackets, with similar cases cited in Manchester, Dorset, Hertfordshire, South Wales, Strathclyde, West Midlands and Thames Valley. And even the athletes themselves didn't have a great start to their Olympiad. American sprinter Karen Clements tweeted after a four-hour odyssey from Heathrow to Stratford that athletes were sleepy, hungry and needed a pee. Could we get to the Olympic Village, please? And tonight the spotlight turned onto the Olympic organisers themselves, LOCOG. Newsnight has spoken to a senior inside who has worked at LOCOG for a number of years at the very top level and he described the management there as thoroughly amateurish, incompetent and unable to deal with contractors. Also, they couldn't spot when contractors were cutting corners. Crucially, our source says that it was the wrong strategy to use only one provider for all Olympic security needs. Other parts of the Olympics use multiple providers and they haven't had as many problems. Having had seven years to prepare for the event, the last thing either this or the previous government would want now would be galvanised troublemakers. Yet that might be the prospect. Well, it could embolden anybody who wanted to cause a bit of a problem if they thought that the system wasn't working properly. Uh, you're talking about 20,000 people all over the country, mainly focused in London, of course, providing a visible sign of security. Now, if somebody believes that security operations being compromised, then of course they might try something. Well, if it looks like a shambles and it sounds like a shambles and it feels like a shambles, it's definitely a shambles. Um, I think the big problem here uh, is about monitoring. Um, there's a tension. There's always a tension between the private sector who want to make their contracts as economically as efficient as possible and the public sector requirement to make sure it's delivered. OK, so this is the official 2012 version. Corinthian 38 Mark III, made in Italy. 
Even though all big events have scares before the starting pistol is fired, few have the capacity to embarrass the government in such a global way. If the Games are a success, then we'll have forgotten G4S's role by September. But if there's a security lapse, the government will have politically shot itself in the proverbial foot. Thank you, guys. I think one of the things... face music and dance. Caroline and